Hey folks, Taylor here. A question I get all the time is, how do you write jobs on OpenFN? Uh, and, and the emphasis is on you there, because there are a bunch of different ways to do it. Uh, I'll talk about DevTools in another video, but right now I want to talk about the Job Studio, which actually runs on the OpenFN platform rather than uh, in the open source integration toolkit. So we're back in the COVID action demo, and I'm clicking into the job edit screen. Um, and I, I like this, here I'll expand it a bit, I like this uh, full screen studio mode. Um, but uh, we also have a, a wizard interface that walks you through the steps of giving a job a name, defining what triggers its execution, choosing your adapter, etc. Um, and in either case, you have, uh, you have access to um, message data to help you write the job, and of course the, uh, the inline documentation um, for, for the adapter that you're using. So if we go back to my preferred studio mode, uh, we pick a color that'll be nice for the demo, maybe something light. Yeah, cool. Um, how do we write a job? <laughs> well, <laughs> the first thing I look at is, uh, is the sample data. Um, so here was that payload that we just received, but I could actually browse back through a, a bunch of recently received messages, and, and this, is going to, this is going to help me sort of pick and choose the data values that I put into my job. And the job here, we're, we're going to create a new contact in a Salesforce system. Um, so if we, if we actually comment this out for now and pretend we're doing it from scratch, uh, I'd type C-R-E-A for create, I'd go down, I'd pick the, the, um, the function that I wanted, and here it would be create. Um, so the, the object name is contact, though if you aren't using these inline snippets, um, you could also sort of get a quick description of what you need to put in there. So it says it, we need to take the S object and then a bunch of attributes, and we can copy this and use it. Um, and you'll see that uh, above we've, we've mapped out first name, last name, age, sex, things like that. Uh, that sounds good to me. So I'm, I'm sort of thinking right now, uh, what information do I need to add to this contact in my Salesforce system? So I'll start with first name. Uh, that's great. Um, I don't want to hard code it to foo. I, I'd actually rather use something from the sample data. Um, and uh, I guess patient name is as good as any, so I'll click to copy that and paste it in there. Um, you'll notice that uh, when I click to copy this node, I'm not copying the value here. I'm actually copying the path to that value, uh, and, and that's effectively creating a merge field. So we don't want every single submission from Comcare to create a patient with the same name. We want every submission from Comcare to create a patient with the name of that patient. Um, we'll do one more of these. We'll say uh, we had a sex underscore underscore C field in Salesforce. Uh, just to point out, um, these jobs, they're meant to be intuitive for the folks who own those destination systems. Uh, so I imagine if you're not a Salesforce administrator, sex underscore underscore C might look a little funny. Um, but the reason this adapter has been written this way is because it's, it's really intuitive for an administrator of that system. Um, so, so you'll see if you're working with, for example, the DHIS2 adapter, there are a ton of different helper functions which make sense for that system get tracked entity instances, uh, get programs, create programs. I, I'm not a DHIS2 pro, uh, but, but it's a, an extensive API, um, and the folks who work with it are able to do a lot of different things. Um, right, so we're, we're entering the sex in here, and I will look through here until I can find a sex field. There we go, copy it, paste it. Now, I want to see if this works, so I'm going to run it from the IDE right here. Um, and what this will do is it'll give me some really quick field feedback. And this is great because right away it's showing me that this fails. It, it says required fields are missing, um, and we, we need a last name field. So okay, what we'll do is we'll add in one more field, which is last name. And, uh, you know, let's actually hard code it. 
let's say uh, the last name is always going to be test. Um, let's see if we can run that. I'll clear the logs here, save and run. And that one succeeded. That's great. So this is this is sort of the process that I use personally for writing jobs. And again, this is using the studio. Um, so after you write your jobs and you get them all succeeding, um, you could take this project configuration. Uh, you could take this project configuration and you could actually export it to run it as a, a, a microservice, or just use the project.yaml to run in the open source integration toolkit. Um, yeah, that's all for today. Uh, I'll show you DevTools in just a moment uh, as a, a very different way of structuring and writing these different jobs on the platform. Thanks very much.